Well, it started out a dry evening, but it ended up with me being wetter than the teenager's knickers at a Take That concert. We also witnessed a fox covering some ground at an alarming rate for a new rabbit call. A close encounter with a wolf spider in Australia, and I come across a very deep ditch which can only end up badly. It all goes horribly wrong. Hello folks and welcome back. Well, three days of foxing, two days without any action. And that is what normally happens. So Thursday night, I went to a new piece of ground, spent four hours there, eight until midnight, never saw a thing. Friday night, I went to the field that's got the very deep ridge and furrow. Again, I spent another four hours there looking over the sheep, never saw a thing. Last night, however, I went out with David in his little Kubota truck. The weather was quite nice when I left, but it was pouring down for the rest of the night. So I didn't think we were going to see anything. And in fact, we got set up by about quarter past nine. And by half past nine, I said to David, we'll give it till 10 o'clock and pack up. Anyway, we moved on once more after that. And then that's when all hell broke loose. So tonight, the quick kit check. Ticket 243 stainless. On top of it, the Hike Micro Stella 2. And the keen-eyed viewers will notice that I've still got the break-off coaster on there. You don't need it. The focus ring now on these new scopes is very smooth. However, I find that easier to change your focus with your hand like that rather than trying to do it like that. It's a personal choice. You don't need it on there. A Fox Pro Inferno caller. Now, that was the very first caller I bought five years ago. And I'm taking it out tonight because it's got what I think are interesting rabbit sounds, slightly different to the ones on the GC500. It's got a nice controller, it illuminates, and you can save favourites on there. So tonight I'm using the Frightened Rabbit. I will put the inset on what that looks like. And by God, does it work. We got some stuff coming in like rockets, and it really did make a difference using a different caller tonight. Ammunition wise, it's the Norma 76 grain tip strike, only because Dan Dan the Bullet Man is having some time off and he's away at the moment. So on with some factory ammunition, the rifle loves it, brilliant. One last thing, so as I was packing up last night to go, I thought I'll take my five round magazine. I've never normally take it, so when you buy a ticker rifle, they always come with a five round magazine. However, I normally use the three round because it sits nice and flush in the bottom of the rifle. I'm glad I took it, that's all I can say. This video has been put together with some support from Banbury Gunsmiths. So Steve and Tony Cox that own the shop, they've been going for about 45 years. They are the premier stockists of Hike Micro products. They've got a huge range there. And I would strongly urge you, if you're in the area of Oxfordshire, Buckinghamshire, to go and have a look, give them a call. They will definitely have it in stock. You won't have to wait for it. So thanks very much to Steve and Tony for your support. I hope you enjoy the film. After my bit of shooting, we're going to go across to Australia and spend a couple of shots with Ken. I'll see you later on. Part three of the trilogy, we're going out to uh, try the area where we were successful within a few minutes last time, around the bonfire or the pile of edge trimmings, shall we say. So we'll see in a little while. The worst possible night to use a thermal scope, everything was the same temperature, I do mention that earlier on. This was our first position where we waited for about 40 minutes, didn't see anything, and then we decided to move on. So here we are, this is the second position, this was about a 20 minute drive away. The caller was out, that fence line is about 120 yards away, and sure enough there's one of our little friends mooching along so the wind is coming quite hard from the left hand side the audio is turned off because it sounds like phil collins is on the roof playing in the air tonight with his drumsticks so there's no audio whilst we're in here watching this with my falcon this little chap i'm playing the sounds every now and again play it get a bit of interest turn it off play it get a bit of interest turn it off that's where the sounder was just over to the left so he gets into that gateway and then vanishes and I mean vanishes. The next time we saw it, there he was, right in front of us, about 100 yards away.
Got the Vesta pictures. Because everything's raining and everything's the same colour and temperature. There's our little friend. Oh, he's little as well. What have we got? What flavour? Little vixen. It's um, not done that a world of good at all. Let's just turn, turn her over. Better. There we go. Well, that was a vixen out of the way. A few moments later, about three minutes later, the dog fox comes along like a mad thing possessed, going for the rabbit call again. I put the falcon down, picked the rifle up, and in that short time he'd moved probably about 80 yards. Bloody hell, Dave, he crept up on us, didn't he? Sorry? He crept up on us, didn't he, that one? Yeah. He's, what's he, 50 yards away? I don't think he's got a head, that one. Well spotted that man. Well, this one... It was about five minutes after that first one, the Vixen I just shot, and this one's coming in round from the right-hand side. If he'd have gone any further, two things would happen. One, I wouldn't have been able to get on him, and two, he would have definitely winded us. That's a dog fox, I can see that. And again, a bit of a startled look. So what I'll do is I'll take him and put him with his missus. Well, that's the first two down, three left in the magazine. We now decided to move about another 20 minutes to another huge valley. We're up on a hill looking down into that valley and then across the furthest point away, 254 yards away, was what we both believed to be a fox on the prowl. Disregard that that's in the foreground. So what I'm going to do now is I put the caller out about 40 yards in front of us, got back to the truck and set it off. Now watch this fella coming in an absolute lunatic now he's gonna to have to come round to the right and then back up towards the left center of the screen where the arrow's showing to avoid that wind give us a shout dave from here shout him dave no! and again. Sorry about the very grim picture, but it's pouring my rain. So that's dead in line with that telegraph pole, so I can find him. He didn't want to stop. That was weird, because I, when I, was, I looked through the skirt, I could see a tail. I was pretty convinced it was, but we thought it was a badger, didn't we, originally? When we first came here, yeah, yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. But it was when he turned around, I could see the tail. You get that ghost image of a tail. Oh, it's a vixen. Um, spotted it quite a way away. Um, put the caller on. And as you could see, it was coming in like a blooming Exocet missile. But the thing was, the picture quality wasn't that good because everything is wet. Everything is the same temperature. I'm not going to turn her over. There's a great big hole in her back. Just take it back to the truck. So we moved back now to the original position by the trees with the bandy legs and I was just having a quick scan around with the falcon and what I always do then is put the rifle out the window, check the focus, make sure that everything's sorted out. As I checked the focus, there he was right in front of us and I rushed this shot. Oh, I missed him. I missed him and I'm not bothered and not proud to show you that I do miss stuff. We all miss stuff, but uh, that fella was off like Linford Christie. And there goes what looks to be like a polar bear. It was cold that night, so that fella keeps going and going and going. And who can blame him? So the time on there is 23.27. Look on there, 23.32. Same place, different fox. He's down. It certainly is. And that's the bear. See that, Dave? Yeah, if you get the on that one. Left hand corner. That's right, yeah. yeah. Well, that's where it is. So you can't see there is actually a great big hedge there, just where the arrow is. Um, obviously, it's not very good, the picture tonight. Well, there's fox number four. And I don't think there's any way I can get across to that. Because there's a great big bloody river here. All right, it's not a river. It's about eight foot deep 
ditch. That's definitely number four down. Well, never say never. There he is, there's number four. David reckon this is a Vixen and he's absolutely spot on. That's the Vixen. Her mate was the one. Yeah, Milky Vixen. So that's one, one of the pair. Well, I got there. Can I get back? Let's have a look. Now I've got to somehow get back across. It all goes horribly wrong. It's all right along here. Go down here. Nope. Yeah. Oh, that's me boot gone. <laughs> Bloody well he's stuck. <laughs> Come on. Oh, I got me I've me boot stuck in the mud. Well, the phone falls out my pocket, goes into the stream. Unfortunately, if it had been this time last week, that stream was about four foot deep. We've had a week without rain. Can you believe it? And my phone still works. Well, that didn't go too well. Boot got stuck in the mud. I'll get halfway up the bank barefooted. All right, let's have another go. The benefits of Buckinghamshire clay. Waterproof cover on the phone works, eh? <laughs> well that's what we had that night just over 20 millimeters of rain right it's now time to get your hat with your corks on do you know a man down under i do this is ken ken was very proactive when i was in hospital in august uh, with my first hip in sending me some footage so that's the first one behind his tree there is a fence there and shortly after this we will see number two coming in exactly in the same place Ken can shoot and play the didgeridoo at the same time so that is a well rehearsed skill and something that we certainly can't do up here in the UK thanks very much Ken I love the tunes it's really good uh, just make sure those corks stay out of the way at the front of your scope so this chap is sniffing around the fox that was shot a few moments earlier he's just stepped through the wire fence he should have carried on going. I don't know if Ken puts bait out at all. I know he has got birds there. That's number two down. Right, Ken, like everybody else, misses the odd shot. And he's not too proud to put them in. So thanks very much, Ken. It happened to me as well tonight. Everybody misses, but there are a few people that never miss. And we all know who they are. Let's go and have a look, see what you got, mate. Yeah, this is the first one we shot tonight. What do we got here? Looking a bit stiff already. The little dog. Looks like this year's pup. Alright, found him. So one. Is that one there? I think it's the one I shot. 
between the tree branches wasn't a bad shot. And then that's his mate to come to see what all the noise is about. And he ended up in the same way. <coughs> Another little dog. Ooh, that one's a bit messy. Another dog. That's three dogs. Might need red mode on that one, but I'll let you play with that. Yeah, so three for the night. Not a bad job. Just another thing you got to be careful of walking around Australia in the dark. If it's not a wiggly stick or a snake, as some people call them, it's these bloody big spiders. I think they uh, call them an orb spider or something. I'm not sure if they're poisonous. But uh, it doesn't really matter if they end up in your face in the dark. They certainly scare the crap out of you. It's like, like fishing all this stuff. Yeah, anyway, best to stay away from them. Thanks very much everybody for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you have, please consider clicking on the subscribe. <laughs>